Hello viewers, welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to deploy a MongoDB replica set in your Google Cloud account. All right. So um, I'll be deploying MongoDB from the marketplace. All right. So in the previous video, we did a WordPress deployment from the marketplace. I've been exploring uh, to show you what uh, apps that we can deploy from the marketplace. So there are Jenkins that you can deploy, lots of other apps that are readily available in the marketplace. So I thought of doing a MongoDB deployment because I've done a separate um, set of videos, series of videos around MongoDB. So uh, this one here, if you search in my channel for Learn MongoDB, there's a playlist with about um, 16 videos actually. Yep, so that's MongoDB and um, I thought you would be I thought you would be interested in knowing how to deploy the same in a Google Cloud platform um, without having to configure everything by hand. So I'll show you how easy it is to get started from marketplace uh, to deploy a MongoDB replica set. So if I go to VM instances, I don't have any VM instance at the moment. So I'm going to go to the marketplace and search for MongoDB. So there's MongoDB that you can deploy. That's a standalone MongoDB, but I'm interested in uh, MongoDB with replication. So this one here from Bitnami, that's the one I'm going to use. Production ready. And if you look here, um, the last updated column, it's May 1st of May 2020. So that's when I'm recording this video, 1st of May. So it's um, very recent and it's a multi VM type. So it's going to deploy multiple VMs because it's a replica set. Right, and the MongoDB version is 4.2.6 on, on operating system Debian 9. Okay, so the usage fee is uh, zero dollars. There's no usage fee, but you only pay for the infrastructure. So you're gonna get three virtual machine each with two CPU and 7.5 gig of memory. They are N1 standard two, and uh, you get a three uh, persistent hard disk of uh, 10 gig. So totally, you would be paying 148 dollars per month. Um, if you are to deploy this as it is, but when I'm deploying, I'm going to reduce the size of these instances. But anyways, you don't have to worry about it because we are just learning it and we will be using our free credits. So I've still got my free credits, which we will see in a minute. Or I can actually show you now. So my free credit, I haven't actually used any of my free credits. So it started with 244 pounds and now it's 243.58. I've only uh, used about um, 40, 42 uh, pens so, so far. Okay, so marketplace. Going to marketplace, searching for MongoDB with a replication. That's the one. And uh, everything looks good. I verified the cost associated with it. I've looked at the, ver at the version and uh, when it was last updated and so on. Yeah, everything looks good. Launch. And when we configure it, we will be using the deployment manager, it, the Google Cloud Platform. It, it's going to use the deployment manager to automatically deploy the, the, the necessary resources for us. Okay, deployment name, if you want, you can change the name and the zone. I'm going to choose Europe West to see um, MongoDB server nodes. So I'm going to go with three nodes. That's the default. So make sure you go with odd number of nodes, all right? So three, five, seven, and so on. So go with three number three nodes. But if you don't want to use three nodes, if you just want to use two nodes, you can add one Arbiter node. So if you know about MongoDB, Arbiter node is not a data node. It's there just for voting purpose to make the count odd number. Uh, it won't have any data. It can't become a primary node, uh, but it just acts in the voting process to select a, to elect a new primary node. Okay, so I don't need Arbiter. I'm going to go with all three data nodes. So one will be primary and we'll have two secondary nodes. And I'm going to change the machine type to micro, the smallest one, one, sh one shared CPU and with 0.6 gig of uh, memory. Uh, data type, data disk type, whether standard or SSD, I'm going to leave that as standard. If you want, you can change it. If you want you can increase the size of the disk but i think uh, 10 is the minimum for debian 9 image okay so networking if you want you can choose your uh vpc network which subnet you want and so on allow ssh traffic from the internet if you select that a firewall rule will be created 
and uh, that will allow SSH to the uh, to these nodes right uh, to the nodes that this deployment is going to create for us but I've already got a firewall rule if I open up firewall rule I've already got one firewall rule in my VPC VPC one so that firewall rule it applies to all the targets within this VPC so any resource that I deploy any instance that I deploy to this VPC I will be able to get into it using uh, port 22 so SSH is allowed basically from everywhere so that's my firewall rule so I don't have to worry about that all right so everything looks cool let's deploy the deployment will take about five to ten minutes and once that's deployed we will have three instances three virtual machines and a firewall rule created but we need to tweak the firewall rule a little bit uh, because when you want to connect to the MongoDB you know the MongoDB uh, runs on port 27017 by default which is not opened to public so we need to update the firewall um, and then we should be able to connect to MongoDB all right so you can see here node 0 node 1 node 2 so it's deploying three nodes and it's also uh, creating the firewall rule so the firewall rule is it opens port uh, 27017 which is the MongoDB's default port source stack so all these three VMs can talk to each other on the uh, MongoDB port, but nobody else can talk to that port. So we need to update this firewall. We can either create a new firewall or we can just update this firewall. All right. And the MongoDB root password is here. And once the instances are ready, we're going to be using this root password and connect to the replica set. All right. So I'm going to pause the video and come back when all the nodes have been provisioned. All right, so the deployment is complete and you know, I'm going to copy the root password here. Copy and it has given us the IP address of the primary node, but we are not going to connect directly to the primary node. We're going to connect to the replica set, right? So if this primary node fails, uh, we should still be able to connect to the cluster if you use the replica set as the connection URI. OK, I'm going to bring up my terminal here and we increase the font size. And I've got uh, Mongo installed, Mongo minus minus version. So I've got the Mongo shell installed, Mongo client tool. So I can use this to connect to the uh, the Mongo replica set that we deployed in our uh, Google Cloud platform. So I'm going to open the instances. I'm going to go and uh, go to the compute engine instances and uh going to grab the public IP address of all the three nodes. So those are the three nodes that got deployed as part of the uh, the mongodb deployment and those are the three ip address so i'm going to copy each one of them and the url the connection uri the connection string that i'm going to use to connect to this cluster is this one mongo mongodb is the protocol ip address first ip address colon port number 27017 comma the second nodes IP address we don't know which one is the master node so 27017 and finally the last node copy and paste it 27017 okay so that's the connection string we're going to use we are specifying the IP address of all the members of the replica set so if even if any one of the node is down we should still be able to connect to the cluster because the other nodes will be up and one of them will be primary so as we are running the default, uh, as we are running these MongoDB containers, MongoDB uh, instances in the default port 27017, you don't actually need to give this uh, port unless you are uh, running the MongoDB instances on a different port. You don't actually need to specify, but there is no harm in specifying it, but it's not actually required. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to pass the username. Uh, yep. So I'm going to pass the username, which is root I guess I'm not sure whether it's root or admin let's uh, go with root uh, the password is in my clipboard and if I paste it will sit there trying to connect because it can't connect to it because there's a firewall that's blocking so let's close that and go to the firewall rule refresh so that's the one that uh, the MongoDB deployment created for us. So uh, if you look into that uh, firewall rule, it allows um, access to port 27017, but it only applies to these three nodes 
and nothing else so these three nodes can talk to each other on port 27017 so they can be in sync so they get the replication information from the other nodes and they can they need to talk to each other so that they can all be in sync right so let's edit this you can always create a new firewall rule but it's easy for me to edit this rule actually so here i'm going to add a second source filter ip ranges and i'm going to say 0, .0, 0, 0.0.0.0 0, 0, slash 0 so it is from everywhere if you want you can just um, add your own ip address all right so port 27017 that's fine save so once this firewall rule is updated it might take few seconds and we should be able to access the the mongodb cluster mongodb replica set okay let's wait for it yeah that's uh done let's launch our browser sorry terminal again and if i go to mongodb paste in the password no nope. authentication phase so this time it returned immediately so there's no connection problem but the problem is with the authentication so i might have used the wrong username here okay the username is admin let's try admin and paste in the password no again it failed I'm going to go and copy that again. Copy. Did I copy it? Copy and no. Nope. Did I copy it correctly? Yes. Okay, let's use the same admin. No. Nope. Root. Yeah, sorry. Sorry about the confusion there. So the connection string that I'm using is Mongo. The, port, uh, the protocol is MongoDB, and I'm using the IP address of the all the nodes that I'm using, uh, which is here. The IP address, the public IP address of all the nodes. And because I'm using, uh, because I'm running MongoDB in the default port, I'm not specifying the port in the connection string. But if you are running it on a different port, um, you might need to specify that in here as well. And I'm using the username root. So there's a documentation in Bitnami. If you go to the deployment page here, and if you go to the Bitnami documentation, uh, go to Bitnami support, uh, more information, MongoDB driver. So one of the link here will tell you the user that you need to connect to. So somewhere I found that the username is root. Okay, so and paste in the password so we are connected to the replica set and we are connected to the primary as you know in mongodb replica set you always connect to uh you can connect you connect to the replica set the write needs to happen from the primary on the primary node you can't write to the secondary node it has to be on the primary node but you can read data by default you read data from primary but you can specify a read preference so that you can read from secondary all right so the write goes to primary and the read uh, goes to the secondary nodes and let's look at the status of the replica replication rs dot status rs is replica set dot status and if i scroll up the name of the replica set is rs0 and if i look at the members so we have 10.0.1.21 which is 10.0.1.21 so that's the first one and that's the primary that's the primary node and the second member is 1.22 which is this one so that's secondary and it's syncing to 1.21 so it's syncing to primary and that's our third node which is a secondary node and it's syncing to 1.21 it's also syncing from the uh, the primary node okay so let's do one testing here so let's um, shut down the primary node, okay? And uh, once this is shut down, once the node goes down, let's try and access the cluster. Uh, that was the primary node, and now there's a heartbeat going on between these three nodes, so it periodically checks whether they each, every node is all right. So if it can't find a primary node in the cluster, one of the secondaries will become the primary, all right? So we should be able to access the cluster even when one of the nodes is down. Let's wait for it to completely stop and then let's try and access the cluster. All right, so VM is now stopped and let's use the same uh, replica set URI to connect to the cluster. Enter the password. Connecting, we should get a prompt here. Yep, we got the prompt. 
and if I do rs dot status right so replica set status and if you look at the member section here so 1.21 which is the uh, th this instance here which was the primary it says not reachable okay so let's look at 1.22 has assumed the primary role so that 1.22 this instance here uh, this secondary now took the primary role and we have another secondary okay so we have the other secondary all right cool so now let's try and bring this back again yep I want to start that virtual machine and let's wait for the machine to come up and then let's try and connect to the cluster and see if it has uh, become the primary again or or it stays as the secondary okay so that's there okay so now let's try and log into the cluster with the same connection string paste the password primary rs dot status and if I scroll above so remember 1.21 is the primary so 1.21 when it came up it became the primary again so it was the primary and then we shut it down uh, this one became the primary and then we powered this node again up and then uh, that again became the primary and these two nodes are secondary nodes cool okay all right, so that's how easy it is to deploy a MongoDB replica set in Google Cloud Platform using a Marketplace. So now I'm going to destroy it because we don't want to incur any charge or we don't want to burn up our free credits. We can use it for other useful purpose. So we've got 12 months um, or we, we've got like uh, so many free credits. So we're going to use these to learn about Google Cloud Platform. So I'm going to delete this. I don't want to spend those free credits okay so I'm gonna pause the video it takes about five minutes and then we need to verify whether it has uh, terminated just a quick uh, check to see if it has terminated all the instances and the firewall rule that's it yep okay so the deployment is gone now and if I go to the instances and refresh there we go so all the instances got terminated firewall rule and we don't have that firewall rule okay cool that's all for this video guys and hopefully you enjoyed this video please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel there are lots of videos coming in this uh, series uh, waiting to be released every wednesday so stay tuned and i'll see you all in my next video Bye bye